Hey everyone, and welcome to Project Corona. My name is Amy, here with my lovely co-host Danielle. Hey guys, what's up? And Alex. Hey, hey. This is our weekly podcast about conquering the phenomenon known as adulthood through hard work, discussion, and most importantly, a lot of laughs. We really hope that you'll join us every week and be a part of this project with us. So I want to start this week off to kind of see what we can work on. Do something every day to make you a little bit better. So I'll start with what I'm working on this week. I am determined to go for a walk every day after work. I know that may sound like small potatoes, but the quarantine has got me packing on the pounds. And I know if I tell myself to run every day, I'll get discouraged and it may not happen. So starting with the walk, we'll see where we go from there. Danielle, what are you trying to work on this week? My goal this week, that honestly I feel like is something I'm always trying to work on, is just worrying less and accepting what I can't change. You know, the easiest thing to do is stress out about something and I'm just trying to get better about it. In terms of what's one thing that I'm trying to do every day to make myself better, Especially with everything that's going on right now, kind of like you were mentioning that quarantine is getting to you, waking up and just trying to think positive thoughts every single day. You know, seeing it as glass half full versus half empty, because honestly, if you have a positive mindset in the morning, I feel like it just sets your tone for the rest of the day. I can't wait to see how you feel in next week. Miss Alex, what you working on, girl? Okay, so I am working on trying to see the beauty in the little things. Kind of like Danielle mentioned, um, quarantine's got me a bit discouraged. I started off in quarantine being super, you know, positive, motivated, and now it's going on two months. And I'm just trying to remind myself that small things are beautiful, like the flowers blooming outside when there's finally a nice day of weather, you know, my cat, just simple little things like that. All right, that does it this week for our weekly challenge. Definitely tune in next week and see if it fared well with all of us. Our main discussion is going to be something that's a big part of our podcast. Basically, I want to know the famous question, what do you want to be when you grow up? We're asked it hundreds of times as little kids. And of course, a lot of us just go with the main answers like dancers, actors, musicians, teachers, Yeah, a few scientists there, and then, of course, a lot of professional athletes. Personally, when I was a kid, I originally wanted to be a lawyer. I watched a lot of Law & Order SVU, and for some reason, in my mind, I thought that Olivia Benson was a lawyer, not a detective. (laughs) So (laughs) I was wrong from the beginning, but so I thought I was going to be a lawyer. My grandma also told me that I was great at arguing, and I talked a lot, so it'd be perfect for me. Um, Didn't work out. Then after that, I wanted to be a neuroscientist. Also, not quite in my uh, roundhouse there. What were you trying to be when you grew up, guys? So, Amy, I just want to say really quick, you were a very motivated little kid. Because that is definitely not what I was thinking of at, like, five years old. When I was a kid, if somebody asked me what I wanted to be, I had three answers. And honestly, I probably would have combined all of them. So get ready for this. I wanted to be a teacher. A ballerina and an ice skater. I am none of those things. <laughs> so in other words, yes, I guess you could say I did choose the basic answer for most kids. I as well chose kind of one of those typical answers that you see among children. Um, I always wanted to be a scientist and I still do, but <laughs> unfortunately life led me in another direction. All right, Danielle. Well, I could definitely see you being a ballerina. And Alex, scientist is not too far off. I was in college with you. I know how smart you are. You could still do it, girl. Um, And interestingly enough, though, only 24% of people reported having their childhood dream at some point. And then after that, only 10% still hold it today, according to ladders.com. That's just crazy to me. I mean, 24%. Do you think that it's just because our dreams and goals change? We realize it's not all it's like thought out to be or, you know, what is that? What's happening there? I definitely think it's just that we evolve because Absolutely. honestly, I've even thought of like, oh, maybe someday I'll open a coffee shop with like my sister or, or do something on the side in addition to my current job, which I do love. As a kid, you're probably not thinking, oh, I want to o- open a coffee shop. Like what, <laughs> what five-year-old is drinking coffee? 
I do have to say, I think, you know, obviously we evolve over time, but also as a child, our world is a little limited to, you know, those basic jobs that we see on TV or that we talk about in school or even what our parents do. But as we grow up, we find out that there's other stuff out there. Lots of stuff that we didn't even know was available as a child. I did go ahead, though. Further on in that latter's article, it actually showed, so why wasn't the dream pursued? 76% never got to that childhood dream. 39% regret actually not chasing after it, which totally understandable. Uh, 34% said they just didn't have the right skills. 16% said financial barriers. And then 10% put raising a family first, which... That's a little surprising to me. I thought the uh, 10% would be a lot higher. Most people would choose family. You know, I thought that was still a big thing, that raising a family was over your career. But I guess, you know, women in the workforce now, we're moving on up, honey. We ain't stay-at-home moms anymore. Let's go back to those ballerina dreams, Miss Danielle. Uh, Why didn't you pursue it? As stated in our previous episode, (laughs) I was a very shy kid. Um, I wasn't involved in a lot. You know, I sort of just kind of fell into... My job as a broadcast journalist. Danielle, did you even take dance classes as a child? Yes. I took okay. one. It was at a kinder care, if anybody knows what that is. Never got my trophy because my dad had off that day, so I didn't go there. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, as Alex knows now, and you too, Amy, I got some killer dance moves, so <laughs> maybe maybe someday. <laughs> facts we've seen the dance moves and she intimidates me she's got it on lock honey yeah all right i'm a scientist what are we doing with the science girl i went to college for science um my undergrad is in environmental science and when i graduated there was an administration change and it just wasn't the right time to go into the environmental field (laughs) <laughs> you at least got some great experience from it though i remember um one of the times i visited you in miami you were doing an internship with like the everglades so i was working with the water management district down there and that was a great experience one thing it did make me realize though is you know and this is kind of a big decision in life is do you want to work hard and not make a lot of money or do you also want to work hard and make a ton of money And maybe not like what you do. Amy, so why didn't you become that detective? (laughs) There was a lot of college behind it. And I was fine with that for a while. But then I realized that me and my father had the conversation that if I wanted to be a lawyer, it would be easier to be a defense attorney. And I realized that I would be, you know, rooting for the guilty people and trying to help them get away with crimes. And I didn't want to do that. And then when it came down to working as a prosecutor, somehow it just sizzled out. And then after that, that's when I went into the whole neuroscience idea because I was really into psychology as a kid and as a teenager. And I'm like, of course, you know, psych doesn't pay a lot. That was actually one of my big problems. Like, I can't be a psychologist, you know, even if I'm working for like the government or like a hospital or my own practice, you're not going to make very much money. Um, Then I, too, went to college for a science related field. And quickly learned I was not very good in science. So that one did not quite work out for me. Uh, So I ended up going for business because I figure at that point I'll find something that I love eventually. And you can pretty much put a business degree behind anything and get an extra zero at the end of that check. All right. So now that we've gone over the past, the past is the past, ladies. What are we trying to do now? Like what is your goal in the next five to ten years? I know a lot of people, since we just talked about money, a lot of people nowadays are keeping their day job, but they're beginning their own little side hustles on the side. Here we are with our podcast, doing something that you're passionate about on the side and then hoping that one day the passion project surpasses your day job financially. So I ideally would like to start my own freelance editing company and end end goal is to eventually own my own nonprofit. What are you guys thinking? Where where are you when you're in your 30s, 40s? What are you looking for? Well, I think I speak for all of us when I say that Project Grown Up will be one of the top 10 podcasts on iTunes, Spotify, etc. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I would say that for me, I love my job being a reporter and I I just can't see myself doing anything else. I mean, I'm lucky that my day job 
is also the passion project. Especially over the years, I've come to realize that what I really want to be is a features reporter. So I'm trying to figure out a way that I can carve that out for myself. So that way, if I choose to go on to another market someday, such as, you know, a top 21 like Chicago, then, you know, at least they know what they're expecting and they will let me hone those skills that I spent so much time working on. Yeah, I think, Danielle, you're really lucky to have found, you know, your passion is also your career. A lot of people, you know, don't have that. And actually, it's interesting, surveys are showing that anywhere between 70 and 85% of Americans are not happy with their current jobs. So, you know, bring that back to what I'm doing. Um, I am working so that I can make money and live a comfortable lifestyle. It might not be, you know, my passion, but I'm trying to work my passions in other ways. So it was something, you know, I really love history. One of the things I was advised on was, you know, becoming a tour guide at a museum. Of course, that doesn't pay. That's not going to pay my bills. But it's something that I can also be passionate about and continue to work on while being able to pay my bills. Because let's be honest, no one is passionate about not paying the mortgage on their house or their rent or starving at night. You know, you want to have a pillow and a roof over your head when you go to sleep. Obviously, a lot of people think that money creates happiness, which we all know is not true. However, we still worry about having that big house in the city or, you know, having the big house out in the country with all the land, two cars, kids are going to a great college. Have we considered downsizing in order to, you know, have that job at the museum? Maybe you have a smaller apartment, but you're living your museum lifestyle or your news anchor lifestyle and you're just as happy. When you first start out, and this honestly applies to just about every career, you're going to start out at the bottom. You're not going to be making a lot of money. But in that first job right out of school, it was really, really low. But here's the thing. I learned so many important skills that have given me everything I need to move on to that next place, which is why I'm here in Western New York now. So I think it does totally end up being worth it you just have to be able to see into the future well then how do you achieve that dream this is the perfect segue for that so i watched this ted talk video the one i watched was all about why you should stop thinking about your job as a job title and focus on your mission instead her name is celeste headley she actually went to school to be an opera singer but instead ended up as a talk show host and reporter. Her job title changed, yes, but her mission did not because as an opera singer, you're connecting with people through your sound, through your voice. Well, that's the same thing she's doing as a talk show host. She's connecting with people. She's communicating with people. Her mission is still the same. Yeah, some people like myself do find their passion right away and we're really lucky, but for All the people out there, and I feel like I know so many people, especially friends, who still are trying to figure that out, that's okay. One of the ways you can figure out what exactly your dream is, is just by figuring out what sorts of things do I want to accomplish in this life. Maybe you like to help people. Maybe you like to communicate like she did. Maybe it's something else. But you have to be willing to try different things in order to figure that out. Because that's what will give you purpose and that's what will get you closer to that dream. And I I love that. I absolutely love that. I love losing the job title and, you know, this idea of, oh, I hate my job and being stuck in that. But I think I think a lot of us have blurred career goals or at least I do you know I want I want it all you know I want to do this and this and this I want to do it all and I don't want to have to worry about the finance holding me back from doing that and maybe it will evolve into something in the future but for the time being I think it's important to not have that I hate my job mentality and um, one thing that Danielle and my our grandfather said was Um, It's a good thing not to like your job because it will strive to improve yourself. It's a way to avoid complacency. So use it as a motivator, but don't get caught up in it. 
I definitely agree with that. And that's a really great way to look at things. And I love that that's what you, kind of what you guys are both working on this week because it ties into this perfectly. Like, yes, you may not love your job and there are going to be times where you really, really don't love it whatsoever. But you have to keep in mind that as of right now, it is holding you down. It is helping you do what you need to do to work towards getting where you want to be. And that is something that we all just really need to be grateful for, especially in times like these when we are essential workers. Amy, I think I think we're all very blessed right now. We all three are still holding our jobs through this pandemic. And that's just really a relief and is a real perspective change because, you know, had I been in environmental field or working as a historian in a museum, I wouldn't have that job right now. So I am extremely grateful for what I do in the technology sector. Slash model. (laughs) I had a photo shoot today, actually. I knew that was coming. Okay, so going off of that really quickly before we wrap things up in this segment, I just want to say, and I just want to remind people that it's never too late. I feel, I know that sounds super... Like, my head is in the clouds. But I really, truly feel like if you want to change your life, you should go do it. I think if there is a career that you've always wondered about, just talk to somebody in the industry. You'd be surprised at how many people are willing to be in your corner, though they've never even met you before. So I think if you really, really, truly want to try out something different or you're not happy in your current job, don't settle. You don't settle for anything else in life. Why settle for the one thing that you have to do every single day? Don't do something that's just a job. Do something that is your life purpose. I would 100% agree with that. Those dreams are not out of reach. Just be proactive, believe in yourself, and work hard towards it. So with that being said, kind of to end up the segment here, what do you guys think? What's one thing that you could do right now today that would get you just the tiniest bit closer to that goal. For me personally, um, I want to get into some freelance editing, so I need to write up a couple of articles so I can start DMing people, just saying, hey, this is what I got. I noticed your article had three typos. Let me help you out and just start sending messages. It may not work, may go nowhere, but I could also pull a job at a magazine, at a newspaper, at any kind of website just by trying. So that's one thing I could do. What's one thing you could do today to get you closer to that end goal? So one thing that I, you know, I'm a huge dreamer. I've got a lot of stuff that I want to do with my life. I always joke that I would love to be a vampire because <laughs> because then I would never die and then I could accomplish everything that I want to do in my life. So I got a lot of stuff. But I think, you know, dreams are dreams, but you can accomplish them. And the main way you have to start is by taking steps, laying out a plan, and it's small things that are going to get you to that end goal. Like you said, Amy, just little things, DMing people, getting that going, and um, doing some research is a great way to start. So I think that's something I'll will. I think that's something that I will continue to look into. I can agree with that more. And honestly, I think going back to, you know, as I said earlier, I would like to figure out a way to become a features reporter in this specific market that I'm at right now I think the thing that I need to do once this whole pandemic is over is just coming up with story ideas I mean that's the biggest thing and I think the only way I can do that is through my work and trying to just talk to people because I feel like the more you talk to people in your community the more you're going to learn about them and then they'll connect you to somebody else definitely definitely networking is so important Mm -hmm. especially in this age of social media a lot of the things I'm seeing are just like oh back in the day you know you had to have ten thousand dollars to get a billboard to advertise yourself Danielle right now you can be on Twitter you can be on Instagram Facebook TikTok LinkedIn all of these free platforms to market yourself to everybody all day for free it's perfect so couldn't agree more but I'm sorry I will not download TikTok (laughs) (laughs) It is so addicting. I spent like two hours the other night staying up to like 2 a.m. just watching it. It it was insane. I had no idea. And I haven't gone back on since because I don't want to go back down that rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, I got enough social media distractions right now. TikTok. 
as for another day. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe not TikTok, but I'm just saying I can see some cute news anchor bloopers hitting it off. So nice. I like it. Um, well, we and- we all know that I'm full of news bloopers, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, follow me at Danielle J Church on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Plug yourself. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Exactly. So I think we can all agree that at the end of it all, when we grow up, we just want to be happy. While a certain career may help you with that, it's really your lifestyle and your perspective that matters, not entirely or not necessarily the job title. So keep working on yourself, keep following your dreams, stay happy. All right, thanks for staying with us through that main segment. There was definitely some insightful ideas in there. I hope they will last with you. Before we wrap up, we want to make sure that we slay that Q&A. Let's see what we got in the inbox. All right, honey. So I got one question that's going to go back to our whole topic of this week. Would you rather work longer hours, but for only a few days a week or shorter hours, but seven days a week? All right. So I can actually speak from personal experience on this. Um, Most of my life, I've worked that nine to five, five days a week, and that's all I was used to. So I thought that's what it had to be. However, when I was in college, well, actually right after college, I worked for Nationwide Insurance in a warehouse, actually dealing with their mail. And we did three 12 hour shifts a night. 12 hours was grueling by the end of day three I was exhausted but having four days off a week was amazing I would love to go back to that schedule I'll take those 12 hours honey but let me let me nap and hang out for four days I feel like this is actually a really tough question for me to answer because uh I started working in college and throughout all of college I only had a part-time job because school but Then after graduation, I've never had a 9-to-5 job. But I will have to go with Amy on this one because longer hours for a few days seems totally worth it for a few days more of vacay each week. Four-day trips to Miami, Chicago, Phoenix, pretty much anywhere would be pretty great for four days a week. Hey, I will tell you a nine to five job is not where it's at. I'm with Amy on this one. I am trying to get that French work week, that 35 hours a week, maybe three days for 10 or 12 hours. And then also, you know what? I want that French holiday where they take that month off of work. (laughs) I am going for longer hours, but fewer (laughs) days of the week because I like my vacation. You can find Alex in Paris next week. (laughs) (laughs) I wish. It could be possible if the quarantine was not going on. You know, I'm just trying to live that vacay life. I'm just trying to relax and have a lot of money. So I got to figure that one out still. (laughs) Well, that's that's a perfect uh, transition into this next question then. Another message we got in the inbox is, would you rather be filthy rich and live 400 years ago or be poor and live in today's society. Alex, I think you should answer this one first. Oh, honey, I think you know where I am going with this. Don't well, be one, rich 400 years ago, right? Yes, one, because I love history and I think there's something so fascinating and romantic about back in the old days and you know if I could be a queen or even a duchess or what have you I would totally take that over technology and the insanely crazy hectic life we live today. What about you, Amy? Well, not to be a downer, but I got to speak to my truth here. Um, I'll definitely be poor and homeless today because if I was rich back 400 years ago, I'd either be super in the closet or they would have hung me at the stake for being gay. So I think I'll just be poor now and try and figure it out. And I'm kind of already there. So (laughs) not much difference. Not much difference. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Danielle, what about you? So I got to be the tiebreaker here, huh? All right. Well, this is pretty easy because although I do love history a lot, I think it's fascinating. I do not think I want to be filthy rich and live 400 years ago. And here's why. Because I like my showers and they invented pizza (laughs) way after the fact. (laughs) 
No, girl, they had pizza back then. They? Just not as good as today. With it all, all the okay, but think, think of it this way. If I wanted to travel to Italy to get that pizza and I'm in the United States, which wouldn't have even existed 400 years ago, it would have taken so long just to get there. Whereas now I can just get on a plane. Fair. Can we also mention that we're all women, so I think our yes. lives would have been much terrible, like much more terrible. Would have been a bit more difficult. Um, we would probably only be rich because we would have been married to a rich guy or sold off from our family <laughs> for alliance purposes. So, <laughs> exactly. So let's just say we can appreciate the past and what it has taught us, but I mean, there's a lot to appreciate nowadays as well. Yeah, let's just stay where we're at. Um, (laughs) But if we're not staying where we're at, next question. Would you rather bike, walk, or drive to work? So I have done all of the above, plus taken public transportation to my job at some time or another. And I have to say walking to work has been my favorite, especially in the morning. It gives me time to just kind of wake up, um, have a clear thought in my head and then especially after work it's just so much nicer than being stuck in traffic or having to ride the subway and biking you just get hot and sweaty and you smell bad you know when you get to work okay well i would disagree with completely smelling bad and being too hot on your way to work because i personally would bike but at the same time i can i truly do appreciate walking i would not want to have to drive to work i miss walking to work all the time i miss walking to class Honestly, it just gives you time to think. Kind of like what you said, Alex. It kind of just gives you a mental break. Think about anything else other than work for a second. You know, appreciate nature and, you know, the sun shining on your face and, you know, whatever really hot tune is getting you in a really good mood that day. Uh, Personally, uh, The Killers is pretty good. (laughs) You know, just whatever song is just motivating you to put a smile on your face. Uh, let me recommend Money by Cardi B. Just saying. That's my best hype for work. Um, and then I, for my answer, I'm actually going to cheat. You can call me a cheater if you will. But I'm trying to teleport, y'all. What is going on with teleportation? <laughs> like, geez, yes, I geez. love it. All right, last question. <laughs> so this one must be from a younger listener. Um, would you rather have no elbows or no knees? <laughs> so I'm gonna go no knees and here's why <laughs> because <laughs> then they probably will not hurt when I'm 80 years old because mm. I run a lot and honestly I don't foresee my knees being in their best health when I'm a grandma someday imagine yourself trying to run with no knees it would be like <laughs> a waddle <laughs> Okay, that would be awful. This is a hypothetical thing we're talking about. So I feel as though somehow my legs would still connect to each other. (laughs) My thighs to my that other part that I can't think of right now. So (laughs) my hamstrings. Why? Would you rather have no elbows? I don't know, man. (laughs) You see, if you had no elbows, then you couldn't like feed yourself and you couldn't brush your hair. It would be hard to wipe your butt. (laughs) If you had no knees... How would you walk up the stairs? You know, how would you get in a car? You figure it out. You figure out anything else. I'm just saying my teleporting idea would fix all of your problems, Alex. (laughs) (laughs) It definitely would. I am probably going to have to go with the no knees also. How about you, Amy? I would love to mix it up. I'd love to mix it up and differ from your guys' answers. But I also have to say no knees because... I don't necessarily see in my mind, you guys are, you guys are thinking outside of the box. You can assume you can still walk. When I see you take out the knees, I just picture like rubbery legs. They just like, and then you cannot, (laughs) you can't do anything on those bad boys, but you could, you could teleport. You could be in a a chair. I still need my arms. I need my arms and my elbows, girl. I can't eat a steak without my hands and I can't live without steak. So bye knees. All right. Well, thank you, Amy, for that lovely insight on why we should have no knees as opposed to no elbows. If you guys would like to send us some questions for our weekly Slay That Q&A, just send us a DM on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. 
Those handles are at Proj, P-R-O-J, Grown Up. And finally, we are wrapping things up here with some words to live by this week. I chose a saying by Sid Caesar, who's an American comic actor and writer. He said, in between goals is a thing called life that has to be both lived and enjoyed. Join us for new episodes every week. They'll be dropping Monday night at midnight Eastern Standard Time, so you can get the week started off right as we unravel another chapter of Project Grown Up. Well, hopefully you found some keys to success in this episode. So until next week, cheers to another week of trying to be a grown-up. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.